are being in the extreme heat. Now, there's a lot of things that you might think of right off the bat, but let me tell you some stuff that you might not even think about. What's up, live viewers? That's right, we're gonna talk about RVing in the extreme heat. Now, these things will go for uh, just about anybody, too, if you have a vehicle or uh, anything, but yeah. Uh, up here, northeast, it has been, oh man, 93, 95, with the heat index into uh, above 100. Uh, there's reports even from people from Canada saying it's over 100 degrees up there the uh, northwest where it's usually kind of cool and damp well record highs up there and as we watch these videos of the wheeled wonders they're all saying about how hot it is the extreme heat they're sweating their asses off well there's some things when you're dealing with extreme heat that you might just think of right off the bat but here's some things that you might not have thought about and the first one we'll talk about is oil that's right your engine oil now your engine oil is there for lubrication and engine oil has what we call viscosity viscosity breaks down when the viscosity breaks down it no longer has those awesome lubricating properties when your engine comes up and it gets all heated up it and it the the friction of everything which oil is there to uh eliminate well, the heat breaks down the viscosity and the oil no longer does its job. So if you pull out your dipstick and you pull it up and the oil just runs off like water, you got issues. So even if you're someone who does regular oil changes, you may have to do an extra one in between if you're dealing with extreme heat over long periods of time. And that goes for the oil in your generator as well. Right, I guess the next thing we talk about is your cooling system. That's right. I'm not talking about your air conditioner. I'm talking about the cooling system in your vehicle. Now, in an internal combustion engine, there are explosions all the time. Things heat up and your cooling system is there to circulate water through everything and keep it cool. Things like your thermostat, your water pump, and all kinds of things work a little bit harder. So, make sure those liquid those fluid levels are topped off and your cooling system is intact and in good working order and again you may have to go get that stuff serviced flushed whatever but get it checked it is a lifesaver for your vehicle now while we're still on the engine bay in the engine compartment we're talking about engine components let's talk about electronics that's right electronics now, if you know anything about electronics, they do not like the heat. That's right. From your TVs to your Game Boys to your computer to your laptop, everything likes to be cool. If you've ever been in a room with a big bunch of uh, servers or anything, it is cold in there. They keep it nice and cool. Your computer has a cooling fan. Electronics do not like the extreme heat. Well, nowadays, cars engines they have they are just packed full of all kind of electronics so you have to be aware of these things you might go out one day and try to start your van bus rv whatever and it won't start you're gonna think starter battery but it could be something as simple as an ignition module well it's not simple but with all these little electronics and modules and this and that they fail in the extreme heat so it may not just be that oh I have a starting issue. It might be a starter or the battery. Well, it might be an electronic part. All right, now let's talk about tire pressure. What? What do you mean tire pressure? What does the extreme heat have to do with tire pressure? Well, guess what? What does hot air do? It expands. So. You may have your tire pressure all set and ready to go, and then all of a sudden in extreme heat, 
that air expands, now your tires are possibly dangerously overinflated. That's right, the tire pressure will rise. That will cause uneven wear on your tires and again, possibility of blowout. So check that tire pressure. And then again, when the temperature drops, contraction. So now you're underinflated. So do yourself a favor and keep an eye on that tire pressure, especially in the extreme heat. What about your propane tanks? You ever think your propane tank? Now, if you get those little ones that you swap out, uh, they're not so bad. But the ones that you just go somewhere to a tractor supply or some propane station and they keep refilling the same tank, those things need to be inspected every so often because the integrity of that steel tank breaks down over time under the pressure and they should be checked quite often on a regular basis if they are the refillable kind. Now, extreme heat, again, you have an, a combustible material inside of a steel tank. It's heating up, it's hot, things can happen. Now, if the structural integrity of that propane tank is checked regularly and certified, it should be good to go. But if you haven't got it checked in a while and you keep using it and refilling it, there might be some weak spots. That could cause catastrophe. All right, did you ever think about your black tank? What? That's right, your black tank. Well, in the extreme heat, your black tank is now a big uh, boiling cesspool of just ripeness. And you already have eh, some smells and bells and it's not the greatest thing in the world. But with that extreme heat, it is making this process go even more and causing fumes that could come up and get a little bit ripe, a little bit rank, and a little bit nasty because that extreme heat you know how it bakes the poo let's be real so there you go your black tank just a bacon in the heat Ugh. now while we're talking about fumes let's talk about some of the materials that your car van truck rv whatever it may be has inside of it some of these plastics that's right not just when they burn but if they are under extreme heat, like for instance, I have those blue tarps. I have a blue tarp out in the backyard. It's covering a big piece of lawn furniture. And when you walk by it and it's beaten in the sun, you can actually smell that PVC, that plastic. You can smell it just baking. So if it's an extreme heat, some of your plastic parts, trim pieces and everything can be putting off some fumes that are very very dangerous. All right, now, how about brush fires? That's right, brush fires. At any time, anything can set off a brush fire. When it's extremely hot and dry, it is the perfect place. It's a big tinder box. Anything can happen. You could pull into your campsite or camping spot, whether it be BLM land or wherever, and your hot exhaust can set off a wildfire. Something as simple as a flicked cigarette butt. All kinds of things. I mean, again, it is a tinder box. It's hot inside the RV. You want to go outside, you want to cook. So you got the barbecue out. A little spark, some hot grease, anything can start a fire. The main thing to think of is your surroundings. If you are surrounded by woods and uh, sticks and leaves and trees and all kinds of things, if a wildfire kicks off, it can spread quick. So you need to be prepared to get your shit together and get out. Because anything, I mean, it can literally spread, well, like a wildfire. 
And when it comes to wildfires, we all know a lightning strike can kick off a wildfire in an instant. And that's another thing to think of. Storms. Storms that just pop up. It's very hot. It's sticky. It's whatever. But that just means that the atmosphere is unsteady. You have cool pockets and warm pockets and cold fronts coming in and hitting warm and boom you have storms that just poof pop up out of nowhere so be ready you need to be alert and aware because you could be just caught in a downpour it's not so much if you're you know kind of where you're at and set up but now you're trapped inside that big tin box that's 120 degrees inside but the most important thing is is while you're traveling and you're driving and all of a sudden boom you're blasted with some pop-up storm and visibility comes down to zero so just think about that too and that brings us back down to like the basic stuff like stay hydrated that's right drink plenty of water you don't want to get dehydrated because when you get dehydrated you get fatigued and your concentration's off you're not thinking right you can make stupid stupid mistakes they can get you in trouble quick, get yourself hurt or someone else. So I hope you found this informative and interesting. And uh, maybe I talked about some things that you didn't think about. So uh, if you have any doubts, go ahead and rewatch this again. All right, gang. I know you don't think I know what I'm talking about because I'm not an RVer, but I do know how internal combustion engines work. And I was a firefighter, so I do know in the extreme heat, all kinds of things can happen. Even people that aren't RVing that are sitting in their house and don't have the proper equipment and not taking the proper precautions, people actually do pass away just because of the extreme heat. So while you guys are out there traveling around, be careful, take care of yourself, and hey, you know, you don't have to agree with me, but... This is Blind Views, and that's the way I see it. Now, Fluffy, uh. what we do here is go back, 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 back.